Hi, welcome to the Oak Trader Report on the 14th of April 2014. It's just coming up to 7.18 in the morning New York time, 7.18 in the evening Hong Kong time. The broadcast from last week has been sent out to emails because of the heart bleed updates that needed to be completed by various server companies and hosting companies around the world. Uh, we've had to update our online system in the last couple of uh, days, but everything's okay. Uh, there's no issues, there's no data stored on that server. It was just strictly updating the website so the login information could remain private. Okay, this is the cotton chart, one of the best weekly charts out of all the commodities active at the moment, I feel. There was a good run up here back in the early part of 2013. A nice bit of consolidation action and then a huge shakeout here. People who got long the market were caught out with this shakeout and the market's curved back around. And if you draw a line along there, it's broken out above that. Um, on the daily, it doesn't look that hot. It looks like it's going to take a bit more time um, to develop something stable. I wouldn't be rushing in necessarily and buying contracts now. Um, but it is something I'm waiting for some shorter term downtrends to break uh, to go along with quite a significant amount. Um, this does look to have the potential to develop into quite a large spike. And if you look here on the monthly 25 year chart, uh, you can see it had a huge spike back in 2010, 2011, and then it came all the way back down. And if you look at the history of commodities over the last 12 years, most commodities are still somewhere around two to four hundred to five hundred percent off their lows uh, whereas cotton um, it's barely scraping a hundred percent really above its lows of the last 10 years or maybe you could look at 30. Um, so in terms of value it represents quite good value if you were looking at it from a value investment point of view and if you draw a line here you'll see that the trajectory of the market the long-term downtrend from 95 was broken with these moves up in 2009, 2010 and 11, And it looks to have developed into more of an uptrend, more of a bullish market longer term. Um, I would suspect that in sometime in the next six months to a year, um, that this market will spike much higher and potentially reach around 120, 130, maybe a lot higher from there, who knows. But I think this has got a good spike in it sometime soon. This is the orange juice trade that I recommended back on March the 17th about here. Uh, you can see that it spiked up nicely. It broke this trend here coming out of this consolidation and it broke out of this consolidation. So I'm long the market here and I'll look to distribute and go flat the market on most of the contracts I have sometime in the next couple of days. Um, but it may well spike a lot higher from here. I might keep hold of a couple of contracts um, but I like to, with commodities, to get in and get out with a profit. It's a decent profit and I know how quick these markets can turn. But it does look good for a continuation of the bull movement in orange juice. And you can see here on the monthly chart as well, what we were talking about with cotton. You draw a long-term downtrend line. It was broken around 2005, 2006. About three years after the metals, uh, for example, like copper, they started their bull movements a lot earlier than orange juice did. Um, and you can see here the long-term adjusted trend. The market looks like it's turned upwards from here. And <coughs> of course, subject to the odd setback, it does look like it's going to develop into a higher area over the next two to three months. Um, but longer term, over the next four or five years, uh, prices do look quite bullish for orange juice or Floridian orange juice. Feeder cattle uh, recommended this also back on March 17th, been following it for quite a few months, um, as the premium subscribers know. Um, and it looks to be um, a continuation of the uptrend, and this market looks to be developing into a market that's going to continue upwards over the next couple of months, subject to normal shake shakeouts. But I think this market's probably got around another six to ten points in it for sure. Um, but I have been distributing contracts, as I say, when you've traded commodities for just under 20 years, 
uh, you know how quickly some of these markets can turn. So I've protected uh, my bottom line, also uh, brought my position to a quite a large profit. So in some respects, I'm just playing with the market's money now and just being patient and holding on to it while the market hopefully continues its uptrend. The crude oil market, um, it's a little bit of a, a strange one. The weekly chart, the five-year, this is a monthly 25-year chart. The weekly five-year chart looks quite positive um, for a move upwards, perhaps short term. But the longer term chart, um, for me, looks a little bit like distribution. Once we get this perhaps spike upwards out of the way, um, I believe the market will fall back quite heavily uh, to its long term average of around 65 uh, to 70. And I think that would happen sometime in the next year. Um, and, I, and I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty positive on that. Um, I meant to say, I think in terms of probability, I would say 75 to 80 percent that once this spike gets out of the way, then that will be the cue uh, to short the market, and there'll be quite a large, large downtrend developing in the crude oil market. And this is the five-year weekly chart I was talking about. If you draw a line along here, and then along here, it's broken out of that distribution triangle on the upward side, uh, sold off showing weakness, you know, lower, lower highs. Um, and it's in one of those in-between places where I just can't quite tell until more price action develops. But it does look like short term um, that it perhaps will spike up to around the 108, 110 area. Um, but longer term, I am negative on crude oil. Um, so I'm not sure if I would go in and out of the market, i.e. long for the next month and then short for the next year. Um, it's a potentiality. I might just hold off and wait uh, to take my short position when the market spikes up at around the 110 level, perhaps I'll look to short the market um, around that position, but I'll let everyone know when I'm doing it. And you can see it here on the one year daily, it's broken out of that consolidation area, uh, broken here as well, and it does look quite positive, and it is um, a very strong market at the moment when you consider the, what the Dow's done in the last week. Um, in terms of uh, a mini sell-off in the Dow, the crude oil hasn't been affected and we saw that back in 2008 as the mainstream economy uh, was suffering and everyone could see it on the horizon, well anyone that's done any research, crude oil just kept going higher and higher, uh, truly a sign of a manipulated market. Um, but again, crude oil uh, sometimes uh, does what it wants, but longer term, um, it can't ignore facts, and that's why I believe a bear market will begin. And the heat in oil five-year weekly looks pretty good. If you draw a line along the top of the consolidation area, and you draw a line along here, it seems to have broken out of that triangle um, on the downside. So we just have to wait and develop. If it breaks this on the upside, it might join crude oil with a spike, but to me, you know, this potentially could be an area where it moves higher from uh, because of the support of such high levels. But I have a suspicion um, because of these kind of spike areas and the sell-offs uh, from where my mouse was at the beginning part of 2012, that this will turn out to be distribution and it will go lower from here. But you can see how high the market's being held up, almost 500% of its lows back in '99. And if you draw a long-term trend line, it hits the point in 2009 and it brings you up to somewhere around 2, 182, 220. And I think that's probably where we're going to end up, um, subject perhaps to a spike upwards to send people the wrong way in the market. And then we'll have a huge bear market begin that will bring us down to around the 182, $2 level. I mean, that's just a prediction, but I feel this action here is somewhat distribution. I may be proved wrong if it breaks out on the upside, but I think the probabilities are telling me that this is distribution. The US dollar index here, uh, the five-year weekly chart, um, you can see that the uptrend here was broken, but I don't think that's anything significant um, as yet. Um, if you draw a line along the top at around 81.50, if it broke that on the upside, that's where I'd be going long. 
Long term, over the next six months to a year, I'm very positive on the US dollar index. Subject to a shakeout, if you're a short-term trader, you would have to be careful for that. But I think long term, uh, the US dollar is looking very good against a whole host of currencies. Uh, refer also to previous Oak traders on Forex for my updates. They still hold uh, from the last couple of months. And you can see here the five-year T-note uh, with the mini crash in the Dow, so to speak, the mini shakeout last week in the Dow. The T-note market came bouncing back up. But it looks to have developed into somewhat of a downtrend here. And the momentum looks to be down although it could reach the 121 level um, with, with this particular correction in the Dow. To me, it still looks like it, it may go lower from here, but again, once that line is broken where my mouse is here, um, that's when I'd be uh, very cautious that we would see quite a large correction in the Dow. But until that's broken, um, I wouldn't be panicking about uh, selling out any index positions if you do hold them in the Dow. Right, this is it on the 25 year, and you can see just before the US stock market where my mouse is, March 2000, uh, when most of the US stock markets made their high, um, you can see uh, the huge drop that T notes had. And this is where the market stabilized and the market uh, collapsed into a bear market, although it's quite a steady bear market. And this is when you know Bush got into office and the, the mini bull market that ended in sort of 2008 and then um, it's done something uh, completely opposite to history. It's gone up whilst stocks have gone up as well. Um, so if stocks continue going up, I think that the trend will revert to the old way of doing things by falling back off again. If we've still got another three to four months left in this market, we, um, the bull market in the Dow, so to speak, we still could see this fall over. Um, I don't think there's too much time left in the bull market and this is what we're getting on to here. You can see here on this uh, yearly chart, you can see the shakeouts moving higher, shakeouts moving higher, shakeouts moving higher, shakeouts moving higher. And it's training people like a Pavlov dog technique that every time it has a shakeout it's good to buy back in, don't fight the Fed. And quite often that is the case, but one of these days in the next three or four months, it's going to have a shakeout and it won't recover for a long time. And it's our job as traders to try and guess, you know, which out of the 10 shakeouts will be the one that doesn't come back. Um, is the shakeout happening now, going to fight back and move back up to around the 1860, 1880 level? I would probably say yes. Um, over the next if we are going to see a crash, I still think the market will go back up a little bit over the next couple of months, stabilise and we'd see a bit of distribution and volatility around the 1840 to 1880 level over the next three months. Um, and we could see this move uh, a fair bit lower, breaking this trend perhaps just to trick everyone. So there's where the trend is there. So say somewhere around maybe the 1760 level 1740 level this particular shakeout may stop and then we may see a huge rebound in the market back up to 1840 1860 and then sometime around uh, august september we'll see the market falling off and that will be the cue uh, for the big correction and the downward um, trend to begin but i think at the moment um, there maybe is some room left out in this shakeout but i don't think it will be um, an extremely severe one. It would be um, a worrisome shakeout for some uh, people who are over leveraged and who haven't distributed some of their holdings, but it won't be um, one um, that, that will be too severe. But I do think it's going to break this uptrend uh, just to shake people out of the market and, and get them to worry. Um, but it will soon turn around after breaking that uptrend and move back upwards to around where the channel is here around the 1860, 1880, then drop back off and then distribute in this area. And this is it on the 25 year. Um, and you can clearly see that most bull markets, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, if we start the bull market from here, one, two, three, four, five, they pretty much end uh, one, two, three, four, five. 
you know, this is the time when most distributions happen um, with the bull market, but that's not to say that we couldn't really go another six months or a year. So you do have to be careful. Just because something's happened in the past doesn't mean it will happen in the future. Uh, we can just use it as a guide. And you see out of this breakout triangle where my mouse is here, one, two, three, four, five, five bars upwards. And you can see uh, with the mini bull market here as well when it broke out, one, two, three, four, five moves upwards as well. Um, see, it, it, you could say once we see a few, a few more distribution bars, uh, perhaps we're going to see something like this shake out here and then back up again. Um, that this could be the area that we are going to see distribution in the market. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, for that. And then if you look at the Dow here, uh, when it broke out, the bush bull market, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and it breaks out here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and you see the distribution area, and the market's looking a little bit more volatile with the swings. Uh, so we could be well seeing distribution in the next uh, two to three months, but I don't think there's any significant need to panic uh, right now. Um, I think there'll always be opportunities over the next couple of months to distribute more holdings. Um, but again, I always look to trade off individual stocks as my main barometer of a selling point in any particular asset or uh, stocks in this case that we're talking about. And here's the MySex index where you had the huge drop off and then you've had the long term or mid term bear flag here. And I wouldn't be surprised in the next three or four weeks to see this back around the 1200 level and breaking this pivotal point and going further down. You know, anyone getting suckered into buying anything to do with Russia at the moment, um, you, you really need your head examining. You know, and if you've still got Russian positions then sell out immediately uh, because this will probably be your best position to sell out and if the market did continue up from here don't get suckered into it um, it's just literally people pulling back their money or the uh, central bank and other types of organizations uh, supporting the market and it won't it won't uh, be able to continue uh, and again this pivotal point, I'm sure, will be broken in the next year. And if I was to take a probability speculative trade, I would say that it's going to be broken in the next uh, two months um, quite easily. But we'll just have to wait and see. But again, I wouldn't go anywhere near Russian equities, no matter how well um, people say they're valued at the moment. The long-term future over the next two years is not looking good for Russian capital and Russian expansion uh, for their corporate sector. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, take care, over and out, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.